We wrap up every single Friday show with a visit from the Prince of Puyallup, uh, Chris Egan uh, from King 5. Uh, his weekly appearance is uh, always brought to you by Fat Zach's Pizza. Now, Fat Zach's Pizza with three locations in Sumner, Puyallup, South Hill, home of the original No Big Dill Pickle Pizza. Book one of their three food trucks for catering, uh, birthday parties, graduations, and corporate events. You can follow Chris on uh, all of the platforms. Uh, you got him on Twitter. Also on Instagram, at Chris Egan 5 And, of course, catch all of his work up at uh, king5.com. We're going to talk to uh, Billy Joe Hobart. I don't know what happened to him. He was in the studio, and now he's great. And now he's gone. Uh, hold on one second. got to get him. Let's, uh, let's get Chris Egan back on here. Hold on. I don't know why he's not being let in. Chris, turn it around. You're in portrait orientation mode. There, that's worse. <laughs> there you go how are you sir i'm doing well how are you my friend uh, i'm doing great uh we had a voicemail we had a voicemailer uh, uh -oh. just do a keith jackson oh boy not as good it was good but not as good as yours well and it's a, it's a uh keith jackson puck that uh i've used a lot but sometimes in the news business or the podcast business timing is everything uh, and uh, this Saturday, University of Washington will be hosting Michigan, and a young man by the name of Billy Joe Hobart will be honored by the Huskies, and that brings one of my favorite Keith Jacksons of all time. Come back to the Huskies as they get ready for this Rose Bowl. It's Billy Joe Hobart. No, he's not from Texas. He's from Poolaloo, Washington. Old Billy Joe. And with that in mind, Pocket, happy Friday. To everybody in the podcast world. I, I just want you to do Keith Jackson the whole time. Just talking about Billy Joe Hobart to Joe <laughs> Kralik. Touchdown, Washington. Oh, Joey Kralik. One was from Sumner. One was from Oregon. But he says they're both from Puyallup, Washington. <laughs> and I don't understand. Somehow they got into school because that's what Puyallup does. <laughs> Which I would argue, Puck, and I know you got to drop sponsors and all that, and we can get into this. Uh, I think that was the greatest high school football team of all time. But, Pocket, you know what time it is. It's time to pump up the podcast. <laughs> I, thought you were, I thought you were going into some Time to pump it up. No, we, we've done it. I've already, before you, you know, you're brought to you by Fat Zach's Pizza. We got, oh, we got so the good. read. We got the read already uh, out of you're the so way. You're so good. You're so good. Um, who was on, you said that's the greatest high school football team you've ever seen, quarterback by Bill, Bella Joe Hobart. God, what oh, just a great Bella name. Joe Hobart. Uh, who, else, who else is on that champions. team? champions. Back then, Puck, they played at the King Dome. Now the King Bowl. Uh, the King Bowl. They played Gonzaga oh. Prep. A lot of people mm. thought that team from the east side was unbeatable. Uh, they knocked off a Snohomish team in the semifinals. And, Puck, this is what I, I love, old high school football days. And when we say old, this is like the uh, 1987 season. Uh, they take out Snohomish, the Panthers, in the Tacoma Dome. And that place was sold out for that game in the mm. semifinals. Um, they go to the, the King Bowl, and uh, they win the state title. And Billy Joe Hobart my mind, probably one of the greatest high school quarterbacks of all time. And then you put on that team, they had a receiver by the name of Danny Thurston, just an incredible all-around athlete. Uh, he was a wide receiver, had offers, I think, to Eastern Washington. They had a lineman by the name of Tom Gallagher that played at the University of Washington. They had a guy by the name of Steve Wolf that went to Washington State University. Both <laughs> those guys were on the line. Uh, they had a kid by the name of Rob Roscoe. Uh, who was the tight end, was just phenomenal. Uh, his brother, I think, played for uh, Loyola Marymount in basketball. Big, tall kid. So they were loaded. It was a fun team. It was a fun year. And uh, you know what? In my mind, I think they, to this day, are the greatest high school football team to ever be. You know, Mike Heward was the coach of that team. Uh, heck of a coach. Uh, Damon Heward, I believe, was like a backup tight end, I want to say. On so that did, yeah, that's what, what was the progression? Was the progression Billy Joe to Damon, Damon to – to Damon went – then it went Damon to a young man by the name of Darren Erath, who actually became oh. Washington's greatest quarterback yeah. of all time, broke like all the records. And I think Erath actually led the Vikings to two King Bulls, and then it went Brock, and then it went Luke Heward. 
Yeah, it was the progression of the uh, of the quarterback high as they used to call it. Do you think Mike Heward was like, "Hey, honey, why didn't we pump out another kid so we didn't have to have Erath"? <laughs> what <are> we <laughs> well, you'll love this, fuck. This is where <laughs> I knew how good Erath was. Was uh, the uh, Brewers obviously went to the NFL, played for the University of Washington, one of them oh. went to North Carolina. Luke is still a coach to this day, but. We would play this Turkey Bowl game several years after their days in the NFL. And we had Jason Gesser quarterbacking one year, Luke Heward, Brock Heward, Damon Heward. But when it, it, and I would argue the best two Turkey Bowl quarterbacks were Erath and Jason Gesser. Uh, those two guys just oh. knew how to play Turkey Bowl football, and it was fun to watch those guys. I mean, it was, it was amazing. We'd have this Turkey Bowl, like 90 people would show up, and like 60 of them. Played in the NFL, and I still remember to this day, Brock, you were dropping back and firing like he was playing for the University of Washington and broke the ribs of King 5 weatherman Chris Warren because uh, he threw it so hard, and it just hit him right in the ribs. And Heward's back there like, you got to catch it, Warren. And he's like, dude, I do weather for a living. I don't play. <laughs> so I miss those days. Oh. But you know what happens, Puck? You get in your 30s, your late 30s, hamstrings start getting pulled. Oh God! I played Healy's, one two years knees. ago. It yeah. was it wasn't good. It was not good. I so just every, beg. Can I just be permanent quarterback, just so yeah. I don't have to run? Well, we would start. I'd get start getting these calls from uh, friends of mine, like, "Hey, Egan, I'm gonna just come and watch this year." I'm like, "What?" <laughs> like they just you know the injuries. Nobody wanted to get injured, so but it yeah. was we we did that for about ten years. It was fun, and yeah. I'm excited for Billy Joe Holbert. Uh, uh, it's you know, great. It's a great honor. I, I, yeah. I Sorry, I want to jump in here real quick because yeah, yeah. I think people think, oh, you're a cougar. You're going to make fun of it because of everything that happened you know, back then. And I actually had it down in, in the rundown today. I was going to get to it with Jim, but this was before the John Stanton thing uh, came out. Uh, I, I think it's great what they're doing. I really do because his past is what his past is. Mm -hmm. But I there was nothing that he did – that affected anybody else really other than just himself, right? It was self-inflicted. And I think a lot about like Ryan Leaf. Like Ryan Leaf's issues were self-inflicted. But the what he did for the program, what he did for the football team, like that stuff should be honored. He should never be ostracized from the university. I don't know if he was, if, if Billy Joe, probably for a period of time, he was ostracized from the University of Washington. It felt and, like it, Puck. For sure. Yeah, but it think about like this: it. what what he got ostracized for. Now, I, I read the the piece today with Mike Varell. I, I'll be honest; with you, I don't know all the details. I don't know if the the loan actually was legal or not legal. That that's besides the point. But mm -hmm. think about it in in today's college football, where a guy got suspended, a program among other things. It wasn't just that you have. We did have a football player named Danaka Smith selling AK forty sevens out of the shell house. Let's just bring you know, make sure we point that out as well. Uh, but, you know, he gets suspended for taking a, a $50,000 loan. Think yeah. about that. In today's college football landscape where we're talking of millions of dollars that people oh. are getting for NIL deals. So I think it's great what Washington is doing. It's perfect that they're doing it this weekend. I loved watching this guy play. He's a huge frat fabric of that team especially that period of that team because mm -hmm. he was mm -hmm. and he was from here in the he grew up in you know 30 miles away and he was old school you know Billy Joe Hobart was blue collar blue yeah. collar Seattle blue collar western washington which you know right now is not blue collar anymore no and, and let's be honest uh, Puyallup goes next to Billy, Billy Joe's name but I know there's a lot of people in Ording uh that claim him and rightfully so uh, he had a lot of family growing up in the Ording Valley. Uh, Did Puyallup take him out of Ording? They don't do that where they get people to <laughs> – right? Puyallup doesn't do that. I don't know. <laughs> I don't I, I plead the phone. Oh, they would never. Uh, they would never dip their toes into other communities and take star athletes. No uh, way. Sometimes Mike Heward was my driver's ed teacher, and sometimes he would have me drive outside of the PL school district just to kind of maybe, and I felt like maybe we were recruiting. Egan, let's head on down to Ordy today. Egan, get the station wagon all, all dollied up in the Vikings gear, and let's pass out flyers. Where are we going? Federal way. And here's the thing a lot of people don't know about Billy Joe, by the way. Uh, uh, yes, Todd, he is 
this. I'm so proud of the Huskies are doing this. And he lives in California, but he is he is so proud to be from the Pacific Northwest. Um, and I did something regarding the Puyallup Fair, and I was singing a song, and he, he literally texted me. He's like, Egan, am I singing that wrong? Because this is how I have it going. I'm like, no, no, no. I just, I had too many margaritas, Billy. You're singing it the right way. Like, he was concerned he was singing the fair song the wrong way. So this guy loves, he loves the PNW. And I'm going to claim, I already uh. claimed that, that 1987 Puyallup team is the greatest team ever. Billy Joe Hobart, in my mind, could be one of the greatest all-around athletes to ever come out of the state. It, these are my unofficial records. He has the longest drive in the history of High Cedars Golf Course. This guy could hit a golf ball farther than anybody. He could compete with John Daly. He's hit a softball farther than anyone I know in the 50-year history of co-ed rec men's softball. He hit this thing, I swear, 500 feet. It hit a warehouse down at the Scout Rec Center that nobody's even come close to hitting before. He played baseball. Some thought he could have played Major League Baseball. He played on one of the greatest Puyallup High School basketball teams of all time. He was a rebounder. He was a role player. And then, yeah, he, he did football. But this is the guy, Puck, that could pick up darts and he'd go beat you in darts. He could pick up, you know, a, a pool cue and he'd, he'd beat you in that. The only thing he could beat me in is pickleball, and he, he'll admit to that. But the guy was an all-around athlete. And what I love more is when I go on social media – and I see his kids saying things about him. And what's happened recently, it sounds like he's become a pretty good dad as well, too. Good. So, uh, you know, that's – I'm excited. I hope Husky Stadium, it's going to be sold out Saturday. The place is going to be rocking. He deserves a big ovation. I think he's going to oh. get one. Of course. I mean, think about it. He, he was the quarterback of arguably the one of the greatest college football teams ever. Yeah, yeah. that too. Yeah. yeah, not a bad little resume. You know, a national yeah. championship that they shared, but, you know – point that out <laughs> he was just i gotta get a dig in all the time because yeah. i'm jealous um he just from everything the way that he played the 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 attitude he had you know it's you know, all those players back in that day for the most part were pretty straight and narrow right it was don james his way mm -hmm. and he was the one guy that would like to kind of go out of his own and have his own lane and say things, and and I thought it was it was good. It was great because not every player should be like a robot. Not to say all the players are like robots, but he wasn't. He was his own person. No. And no. thank God there was no Twitter back then or oh, uh, social media. <laughs> oh my God! I mean, and and I just I love the I loved his face mask. <laughs> that that giant face mask that he had. He looked like almost like a a lineman. He played like a defensive player. He didn't have the prettiest throwing motion, but it, it was effective. And uh, he just was a – he was just a football player. Yeah. You know, he was a football yeah. player. No, nope. could have made a movie about him. Who knows? Maybe maybe you and I can produce that, you know, we'll call it Billy Joe. Billy Joe. Puck, well, it's just a name, too, Billy Joe. It's just perfect. <laughs> right? For a quarterback, Billy Joe, the legend. I'm surprised, I'm Billy surprised Joe. more kids in the 90s in Puyallup weren't named Billy Joe. I'm going to be honest with you. I thought, yeah. I thought that would have inspired a few more. but uh, Too many Chris's. Yeah, a lot of Chris's. Yeah. A lot too. A, a lot of Jasons. A lot. Of, yeah, not, not too. But yeah, it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be a fun atmosphere. Uh, it's gonna be. It's a. It's an old Rose Bowl matchup. You know? What do you think? You think the Huskies got a shot here against Michigan? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. This Michigan team looks very beautiful. I mean, uh, I know Alex Orgy. It's all about let's run, run, run. But uh, you know, I, I think they got a shot. I, th I think they do. I think they. You know, they. That Rutgers game was absolutely ugly uh last friday uh shouldn't have lost it great gross should have hit those and uh yep. but uh we'll see i think it's going to be a fun fun little game and the kooks are off so all the kook fans can sit back and enjoy this one as well so well enjoy it from from a michigan standpoint just you know yeah. I, i'm getting my dun 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 i need uh do you have any like bellevue gear i can wear or something you can wear all my bellevue gear and here's your little puck uh trivia Pacific Northwest Nugget of the Week. Uh, oh. That fight song, the Michigan fight song, was written by the Sumner High School band teacher. Really? Yes. He went to Michigan. He played in the band there. He played huh. band at the Michigan hockey games and the football games, and somehow he came up with this song and wrote it, and his name is on it. I think it's uh, – I believe it's Joe Carl. I got a I'm blanking here on the podcast, but how, how long has Heisman, it been around? Uh, it's been around for ooh, forty years. 
That, that's so, it. I thought it was much longer than that. Okay. No, he, yeah, yeah. Little, there's your trivia. Doesn't like Sumner it. use – why doesn't Sumner use that, though? Doesn't Sumner use the Cougars fight song? I think they do, yeah. I, maybe Sumner's history goes well before that. So Yeah. That may go back to the rhubarb harvesting days or somewhere back in the 1920s. <laughs> rhubarb, yay or nay? <laughs> nay, overrated. I don't mind it. <laughs> I don't mind it. Thumbs up. I don't know how you like rhubarb, but you don't like apples and collards. I mean, apples and Apple. collards, gooey, fun, oh. easy, delicious. Rhubarb, just, I don't get it. You don't like I rhubarb don't, jam? I don't get rhubarb. You don't like rhubarb jam? That's not bad. Rhubarb is kind of like crows to me. I don't get it. I don't know how you know they're out there. I don't know what they're doing. Crows, you don't, don't, don't F around with a crow. They have remember. Seen, Pocket, have you ever seen a baby crow, by the way? No. No. Deep thoughts, huh? <laughs> I saw a crow last year because we have a bunch of bunny rabbits in our neighborhood. I saw a crow come off the power line and murder a, a baby bunny in front of me. Oh, wow, just that's, with its uh, beak and just tear, tear, tear. Yeah, those you know? guys, those crows are smart. You don't want to mess around with them. Right. <laughs> those crows are probably smart. They, listening to the podcast, right? Hey, they probably oh that crow. I'm going to get that fat kid <laughs> right, right when he comes out. Let's take him out. You brought up the fair. Do you know uh, on this day today, 1900? Did the it Puyall start? Puyallup Fair was held on this day, 1900, October Seriously? 4th, 1900. Wow. How about that? Wow. On and the, even then, you. there's a guy back there reading the history. Augusta Nielsen was back then in 1900 debating elephant ear or scone. Yeah, that still is getting a lot of debate out there right now. Here's, here's my only issue with the fair is now they got like next week it's Oktoberfest and we're gonna have all the food there i'm like yeah. you know what just shut it down i don't want to see that food for another year i want to make it special when i have another one of those you know bavarian biscuits or whatever i'm eating there let's just, yeah. just shut it down i only need fair food once once a year i got I don't you need it every weekend where do you where are we where are we at tonight where's the big game of the week king five well this one's going to be pretty special tonight. And I'll, I'll say this. This is an interesting um, storyline. I've got a couple of interesting storylines. And, and, and we have a lot of parents that listen to this. So I do, I do want to send this message out as well. Uh, the game tonight is Jackson against Kamiak, two three and one teams. Uh, both of these teams play in the, uh, what's called the 4A Wesco North Division, which is very tough. Lake Stevens is in there, Arlington, mm. Glacier Peak. It's not easy. Um, two years ago, um, Jackson was 0 and 10 pocket. Uh, they were struggling. Uh, the program was kind of having troubles finding its identity. Jackson's always had a pretty good basketball program through the years, but football over the last five years has not been good. Uh, the sophomore class decided to get together and says, you know, let's change the culture. Let's, let's, let's do something about this. And the parents also got on board as well. And this is where I say as parents, you got to help these coaches out in high schools, okay? They can only do so much. They only get paid so much. And Jackson High School, I tell you, I've been to a lot of high schools. Their booster club is, there's a couple people working this booster club that need shout outs. Uh, they have been phenomenal, like texting me, emailing me, Egan, we got this for you. This is happening here. This is for you. And they're doing it all for the kids. A lot of parents will sit back, puck, and say, why don't we have this? Why does that school do this? Why do they got that? How come we don't do that? How come that school? Stop complaining and get out there and do something about it, okay? Uh, you want your school to be great? You want a bunch of fans to show up? You want to have barbecues and tailgates? You go do it. Go do it. That's what they're doing in Jackson. The place will be packed tonight. Kids are having fun. They got tailgating. The parents are involved. It, it's awesome. Now I go to that sophomore class, and a young man by the name of Will Turpin, a wide receiver for Jackson High, he was one of the leaders that says, we've got to change the culture. We've got to do it. We've got to hit the weight room. We've got to recruit more kids in our own school to play football. So Will started this whole turnaround. Will had a great junior year, wide receiver for Jackson. Gets to his spring season. He's fired up. He's ready to go. Uh, Will gets handed uh, some bad luck cards. Will finds out he has leukemia. Uh, Will has to undergo a lot of therapy, spends a lot of weeks at Seattle Children's. Will could have just not shown up this year, Puck, because he's going through a lot. 
Uh, it's not easy to battle cancer. You could have played the why me game. Why did I lose my senior season? I was the big reason this team's rolling now. They're three and one. Will's not doing that. Will is the captain of this team. Will comes out with the flag, leads his team onto the field every night. Uh, Will will be with me, you know, during the five o'clock newscast tonight, pumping up this team. And I just think it's a, it's just a great story. Of uh, you know, inspiration, motivation. That this young high school kid could have just said, "F it," you know. I'm getting cancer. I got dealt a bad hand, and I just lost my senior season. I'll never play football again. No, he's not. He's like, I'm going to help this team have a great year, and I'm going to lead this team. So, my shout out to Will Turpin, young man. I haven't met the guy in person yet, Puck, but everything I've read about him, um, this is what it's all about. This is why I love to cover high school sports is to be able to share these stories because uh, this kid sounds pretty special to me. So. That's why you're the best at doing it, my friend. You are. You oh. really are the best at doing it. And I just think when I hear stories like that, and we always, we always criticize the younger generation. Mm -hmm. They do this wrong. They're not, you know, and we're all guilty of it. They're not like how they're not as tough as we were. You know, you hear stories like this and you just think to yourself, you sit back and go, you know, we're going to be okay. Cause there, yeah. there's, there's a guy, there's a lot of people out there like Will Turpin that get it and understand it. And yeah. what, what a great outlook on life and, and just being handed a, a real crappy, uh, you know, deck of cards. Yeah. So my, my best for him. I hope recovery goes well, and it's going to be uh, it's going to be great to meet him. And uh, congrats to both these schools, Jackson Kamiak, both doing it well. And I do love. I've heard that phrase by the way, Puck. You know, they're not as tough as I am. Yeah. You know, we were back then. You know what? I'd love to find one of those kids from the '60s and '70s that would have had a little phone in their hand that said, "You know what? You look crappy in your uh, jeans today." Or you, you know what? Hey, fat guy. You know what? These kids got to deal with this crap all the they time. They do. Puck. I they mean, do. It's so terrible. I'm sorry. It's, it, it's different levels of toughness. Different levels of toughness. Yes, I agree. If you go serve for our country, protect protect our country. You know, the men and women that are out there fighting wars. That is another level of toughness. And these kids, a lot of them, don't know about that yet. And hopefully, yeah. they never will have to. But uh, you know what? There's a lot of tough kids out there nowadays, and uh, you know, we got to honor them and salute them. So. I agree, hundred uh, percent. Where uh, you got weekend? You, so you're, we're, we're that game tonight, and then yeah. uh, we're doing probably the Husky Seahawks. Husky, what do we got on Husky Seahawks? We got Hus We got an hour long pregame show, so the entire King Fox Sports team will be there. It's uh, you know, so we have that. Then we got Wait, the hour long pregame for what? For uh, the Huskies in Michigan, three to four, and then the game's on King Fox. Oh, you're doing a pregame show. Because we're now, Puckett, uh, welcome to uh, Channel 5, the home of the Huskies, the Big Ten Network. Oh, now. that's right. I forgot. Yeah. Well, so, what's, what's on the pregame show? Who do you got? Well, we got uh, we got Damon Heward dropping some dimes. Uh, I'm hoping Billy Joe Hobart will join me live. I right. also love this. We have like five people in the newsroom like, Egan, you got to get dubs with you. You got to get dubs with you. I go, <laughs> Everybody, every time you keep saying get dubs or get a mascot, it's good for like 10 seconds. They don't yeah. talk. They, you can't interview it's, a mascot. Well, <laughs> do they know that? They're, I mean, they're news directors. So they're oh. not bright sometimes. So, it, you know, we got, uh, I think Leah Pizzetti will be out in one of the boats tailgating. So she'll be doing weather from. <laughs> what? what? Whitmer Stop. What boat and what time? She'll be out in the log boom. Uh, well, I'll be there. Pockets gonna I'm be a on that big boat. fan of Leah. I figured you would be out on that boat. <laughs> then we get ready. I don't you. I don't know about you, Puck. Sunday. I there's just I've never seen more hype over a team after a loss than this team. Uh, <laughs> Oh, the Seahawks? The Seahawks. Oh, and I yeah. also love the fact, if you go to that post-game press conference with, with Mike McDonald, somebody somebody asked the question, you know, about Geno and DK having this great game, and he, yeah, they were good. I mean, but we lost. <laughs> like, yeah, he, he just, he's not a man. He, he, he does, he's not verbose, that oh, Mike McDonald. Man. But that's, that's not why you got him. I get it. Yeah. No, I mean, so I'm excited to, to see that game. Uh, and then, puck it next week, the Kraken. Crack and tip off the season. So, I mean, it's it's a busy time around here. I mean, it's going to be fun. And 
I mean, gosh, you throw in an NBA team next year. I don't know how we're going to do it, Puck. I, I mean, tuned in. I tuned in uh, the other day, the last preseason game, to see my good friend Ian Furness's debut yeah. on the uh, on the Kraken Network. Mr. Hockey. Mr. Hockey was great. He looked wonderful. He nailed it. Uh, they finally they finally made the correct hire. Getting no, all the Ian Furness on the on the Kraken Ho- Hockey Network. Yeah, I mean, you, I'm I'm excited for Ian. This is a guy. I believe hard, you know, I, I always tell everybody, work hard, learn everything, it will pay off. Yeah. And you hear these stories, of, oh, you got to be good looking to do this. And I'm not saying Ian's not, I'm not saying you're not, and I'm not. But you guys- <laughs> Hey, Ian, did you hear that? He, he doesn't think you're good looking enough to be on TV. I mean, it's great to see guys like Ian who are obviously, you know, look challenged to get on TV. Jesus, man. I didn't say that. You put words into my mouth. Oh, what I'm saying is. Hard work pays off. This is a guy that spent many nights calling Portland Winter Hawk games. This is a guy that was grinding, you know, doing silver tips, doing two birds, <laughs> and he knows his hockey, and it paid off. And, and did it all with a giant it, wart on his face and not good looking. I mean, <laughs> somehow that's going to turn into a bad Instagram dump for me. <laughs> I, I just, I, I'll be honest with you. The, I'm not the biggest hockey fan in the world. The uh, yeah. the reason I will tune in is just to watch him. I mean, that's just to watch Ian. Yeah, just so. to watch Ian do it. They got to yeah. figure something out though. And I, I was going to send him a note, but oh, you're you're part of the network, right? You work there, so you yeah, know, you're part of all of it. You got to where they do their studio, the show. Yeah, they got to rope it off so people just can't randomly walk up. I'm watching it, and people are walking up from their seats. The guy's looking around. He's got a beer, and he's like, "Hey, I'm on TV." You know, hey. You know, it's like, like one guy it's is a it, learning process. Who is, is Al, Alice? What's Allison's last name? Uh, L- Lucan. Lucan no, yeah, Lucan. Yeah. Okay. There's like one guy, I think, like almost like sat in her lap. It's like, <laughs> well, they're learning. It's preseason. Yeah. We're learning. <laughs> they're learning yeah. some things. So, no, that was good. I lo- Ian knows his hockey. It's going to be a fun season. And I yep. do see this team like, fuck you and I grew up here. Um, you grow up here, you, you sign up for fall soccer, you play basketball, maybe football, and then you play baseball or softball. Yeah, uh, and, sure. and, you know, we just didn't play hockey. And But I see it. I, I see things slowly changing. Um, you know, I, I think it's going to become a hockey town. It still is going to take a couple of years, but I think this is a good yeah. additional move by it the takes Kraken. Time. Yeah, it takes time. But to get their brand out there, more and more on more and more eyes. Sure. Uh, smart move. Um, we'll see how the season goes. I'm not going to sit here and, and break down the the team because I, you know, would sound like an idiot. Let's let Ian do that instead of you and I. So. They score more goals than the other team. They're going to win the majority <laughs> of their games. You, uh, you, uh, you have a great weekend. Have a good uh, time tonight, Jackson Kamiak. We'll be watching. Uh, we also got uh, the Husky. You got a Husky pregame tomorrow. And then, yep. uh, of course, uh, the Seahawks. You do the fifth, you have fifth quarter, right? I do the fifth the... quarter highlights, and then yeah. I do like the NFC West highlights. So the show's about a half an hour puck. You'll see me on there for about three minutes. Yeah, it's great Quality though when they. It's great though when they do toss it back to you, and it, you do it like it's live. It's it's amazing. Well, I am live. Are you? Yeah, I'm live. Oh, okay. <laughs> so if something happens, I can, <laughs> I can, yeah. <laughs> Some people aren't live, Puck. Some aren't uh, live. Okay. All right. I have Enjoy. Because be I'm an accordion pocket if the show is too You live, are an accordion. Too, yeah. You so. are. You are a master of everything. Okay. Enjoy your weekend. We'll talk to you next Friday. Thanks, buddy. Be good. Here he is, Chris Egan. Chris Egan 5. Uh, it's all brought to you by Fat Zach's Pizza. Uh, three locations in Sumner, Puyallup, South Hill, home of the original No Big Dill Pickle Pizza. Book one of their three food trucks for catering, birthday parties, graduations, corporate events. Uh, find Va- uh, Fat Zach's Pizza on Facebook, Instagram, and, of course, FatZach'sPizza.com. Follow Chris on Twitter and Instagram at ChrisEgan5. All of his work up at King5.com. In case you missed it, it will be up later on YouTube. Uh, you can listen to it, Apple, Spotify wherever you find your podcast. And, of course, one-stop shop at pucksports.com.